Hello, Facebook single ladies. It's Jackie Sabrin, your love coach. And I'm back today to make another video for you because I'm passionate about um, being consistent for one, but I'm passionate about helping you get engaged at any age. And um, I wanted to start with that word consistent. I think that would be the, hi, Maureen. Hi, honey. It's, uh, I think consistency is one of the big things I want to talk about. But we're going to talk about how to date after a dry spell, after a really long dry spell. So that could be maybe, um, maybe you've been in a marriage for decades and your husband, you lost your husband. And so you're getting back out there. Or maybe you are, um, you've never been married. Or maybe you just got out of a relationship and um, haven't really met anybody. And so it can seem like a dry spell, especially if you were in a relationship for a long time. But whatever, regardless of what the circumstances are, I hear you. Um, there's a lot of fear that comes up when you're going to put yourself out into the dating world after a dry spell because it's the unknown. And um, hi, Alice. Thanks for being here. Hi, Cheryl. And the unknown is really scary, right? We're all addicted to the knowns. Our mind wants to stick to what it knows, and it doesn't want us to step outside of our comfort zone. And, but what is required to break the dry spell is to do exactly that, is to get out of your comfort zone. The number one regret of, in life that I've heard and read, and all of you can probably agree with this, is the number one regret we have in life is that we didn't take enough risks we played small, we were too afraid, we lived in fear. And I think looking back on your life at the end of the day, you wanna look back and go, yeah, I, I went all out. <laughs> I went big because, you know, it's really all just about fear, false evidence appearing real. And once you recognize that fear is something that the mind creates to keep you safe, once you learn about fear, you actually can quickly overcome it. So, and um, it's all about stepping out of your comfort zone. And so I'm going to give you some practical tips on how to date after a dry spell, and then maybe just tell a couple stories. And then of course, answer um, your questions if you have any. And so um, how to date after a dry spell. The first thing I'm going to tell you is to be deliberate. What I do is I'm a, I teach deliberate dating and conscious creation. So deliberate, being deliberate in all you do, don't just haphazardly throw a profile online or throw yourself out there because what's going to happen, and I don't want this to happen to you, and maybe you've already experienced that, is that you're going to um, experience a series maybe of setbacks and that are going to cause you your your morale to dip, right? It's going to take, you're going to take a little knock. You might get a couple rejections right up front, and that's going to scare you even more. And so even if you already have done this and experienced this, just stop what you're doing and create a new plan for yourself. Turn your dreams into a plan, being more deliberate. So the first step of being deliberate in dating is to really sit down and get clear. You have to have clarity. When you go to buy a car, you, you don't just randomly buy a car. You've been thinking about, you know, I'm getting ready to buy a new car. And I've been thinking about the kind of car I want for two years. <laughs> I don't just go and buy a car overnight. I'm thinking about how it's going to feel when I drive it. Do I want luxury? Do I want sport? Do I want two-door, four-door? And then I'm looking at the, the safety features. And I'm looking at if it's a hybrid and if it's electric and if I can plug it in. So I'm spending a lot of time and care. And especially at the point when you hit the midway point of your life, if you are um, watching this and you're, you're halfway through, like me, um, uh, you, you definitely want to be more deliberate because um, we want to take our time. Because it is really the, the short path. And I've talked about the short path. Being more deliberate, getting really clear about what you want really is a short path because when you know what you want, the more you know what you want, the easier it is for you to take these steps forward. So getting clear means sitting down and making your list. And so, yeah, you want to have a list. Um, I know some people talk about don't make these lists, but how do you know what you want if you don't, if you don't write it down? And you want to come up with your, I think that women are too picky especially as we get older, because we, we think that we want, we need all of this in a person. But the older we get, the more um, in personal work that you've done, the self-development that you've done in yourself, you actually are more capable of taking care of yourself emotionally speaking. So your, your neediness is 
you're in a different place in terms of your needs. So it's more about what you want, you know, what you want in a partner, not as much as what you need in a partner. Um, and so, so what you want in a partner for me, I'll just give you my list. It, I'm getting ready to go to a hockey game tonight. And so I uh, know I'm not a big hockey fan, but I, I love sports and I don't, um, I love sports because I love the camaraderie com camaraderie and I love the um, the excitement and I love the enthusiasm and I just think it's 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 a fun thing for me to watch and I wanted I put on my profile that I love sports and I wanted a man and I was very specific in my mind I wanted a man who loves sports I don't necessarily love sports the way my husband does but I love a man that was into that I love that they um, he can commentate the game tells me every play and he knows all the players history and it's fascinating to me to sit there and watch him go through and he's been playing sports his whole life and he can tell me every little piece of that's going on in the game that we're watching and so it's really fun for me to to be a spectator of sports and so that was an important thing for me I've always loved sports and I've been athletic my whole life so put Put on your list things that you love. Don't put thing. Don't put down that you want to go in the symphony when you when you have no intention of doing that or you've never been. I mean, be authentic. It's okay if you if you maybe haven't experienced a lot of things. Like you think, oh, I haven't I haven't traveled much or I haven't I've been married for so long. I haven't really had a lot of experiences. But I'm going to disagree with you on that because you there's only one person like you in the whole world. Okay, you're so unique. And I know that you've had incredible experiences that had, you've had feelings and moments in your life that are going to be very fascinating to the right man. Remember, we only need one. And so don't discount your experiences, even if you haven't been a world traveler, who cares? I mean, I don't want to be a world traveler. Um, you know, I have my own interests and I'm, I'm sticking to those. So make a list of things that you like, qualities that you want in a man and get really clear on what you want, not necessarily the needs part, because I'm going to teach you how to meet your own emotional needs in the Bridge to Love program that I've been sharing with you about. So it's all about getting really clear on what you what you love and how you want to spend your time with the man. And, um, you know, for example, my husband loves to road bike, but I have no intention of getting on the bike on going out on the highway. <laughs> that scares me. But I love my beach cruiser. We'll cruise around town on that and then he'll go do his road biking. So um, another thing that I think is really important is I really, really am a big believer in finding somebody that you have the same shared interests. I think that that is the key to a successful relationship because one of them, it's because I love my husband and I, it's almost like we're the opposite. He's a man and I'm a woman, but we love exactly the same thing. It's, it's kind of uncanny. We like the same food. We like the same drinks. We like the same how to sleep. We like to work out. We, I mean, literally when we first met when we were dating, we ordered, wanted to order the same things on the menu. So we have very similar um, tastes in so many things that it's easy to be with him. We're very compatible. I did not have to give up anything or make a lot of tweaks to my lifestyle because he was living the same life. So it's important to be authentic and to get real with yourself and look at, is it a need or is it a want? Do you need a jet or you just want one? <laughs> because you can get on a commercial jet. So I guess it's getting real with that because um, the more clear you can get, the easier it's going to be to find your man. And I know that sounds like that's, that's not gonna work, but the thing is that you have to have that clarity. It'll save you a lot of time in the end. And by the way, the dating process is gonna give you that clarity. So the second piece of getting back out there after a dry spell is setting an intention. Setting an intention, that's planting the seed that's going to grow, that's going to blossom into your relationship. So you have to commit wholeheartedly to the process because if you don't do that, you won't see the results that you want because if you have any doubts, there's, they're going to be sabotaging you every step of the way. And so getting clear and then setting an intention with what it is you came up on your list and, and really committing to yourself that you're going to do whatever it takes until you meet your husband or your committed partner. You are gonna do, you're never gonna get up, give up and you're gonna do everything for as long as you need to. You're gonna do it for as long as it takes. Um, I've heard, I've, I was single for eight years and I know I've talked to women that have been 
a single for decades and it's like now they're in committed relationships and they're so happy right and it's like thank goodness that you didn't give up because no matter how long it takes the, there's love at the end of it but if you don't go into it committed then then it's going to take longer so this is just all about the short path and all about fast tracking you and so so getting back out there after a dry spell is going to require that you start smiling you have to start smiling everywhere you go. It's a little tool that you can do right away, going smiling at the supermarket, smiling at men in particular. But if you're too afraid to engage men right now, start with women. Just smile at a woman. She'll smile back at you. Go to the grocery store and smile. Talk to the people in line at the grocery store. That's what I do. And you'd be surprised. Just, you know, how's your day going? Oh, that looks really good. I'm going to have to try that sometime. Ask question. You have to start to practice some more, being more socially skilled. After you've been single or you've been alone for a long time, what happens is we're, these are just muscles that we haven't used in a while. And it feels very uncomfortable to start to um, talking to people and strangers, and especially if you're shy, you know. And so these are skills that you can develop and you can start in, in your warm markets, in the areas that you're comfortable going to the community center, your grocery store, the post office, the bank, everywhere you go, you need to start expanding your three foot, you know, comfort zone. You need to expand at that out to, you know, 20 feet so that you start to become more social because dating requires you to be more socially skilled because you have to put yourself out there and you have to know how to navigate that. And so you can just start taking baby steps by making a commitment to start engaging people in your community, coming out of your building, in your elevator, walking down the street. Don't be looking at your phone. Be looking up and saying hello to everybody. How's your day going? You'd be surprised how many people will smile back and engage, engage you. And so um, the next thing is to understand, start to uh, become more aware of your feminine energy and all of its intoxicating qualities. And, and that's one of the things that I love talking about. I love um, teaching women how to be more in their feminine energy. Our, when we're in our feminine energy, we're in our, our intuition, our intuitive heart. When you're coming from your intuitive heart, it's, it's the direct connection to your authentic self. When you do that, you're going to connect much quicker to a man. He's going to see that, and that's what he's after. So it's, it's learning how to dismantle all of these fears that you've built up over the years. I mean, there's a ring reason why you're single. If you've been on a dry spell, it, there's a reason. And so something's happened to you. You've had a broken heart. Um, you went through some abuse. Um, your husband may have passed away. Or maybe you never got married. And, and there's a reason for that, though. And you really need to begin to explore what those reasons are and heal those parts of you that were wounded. And that is the most beautiful, beautiful work that you can ever do for yourself. And so um, what the dating process is going to do, it's going to bring up all of your wounds, it's going to trigger all of those fears and all of those painful experiences for healing. And so you want to look at all these potential dates as, as, um, as angels, okay? These men are angels. They are coming to help you emotionally heal and grow up because Let's face it, men want a woman. They don't want to date a little girl. They want an emotionally mature, highly functional, beautiful woman. And, and um, so you have to recognize that putting yourself out there is going to require you to become more intimate with yourself about the things that have caused you to stay single. And, and I mean, the most growth you'll ever experience is in a relationship with someone else because they're constantly challenging you to be better, to be um, more of who you really are. That's what love does to you. And so um, the, the next thing I want to touch on, and I know I'm just, I'm just doing little bullets because it's so much to cover in one call, but I just want to give you a broad stroke, then I'll, I'll zone in on some more specifics. The, no, the other um, the tip that I want to share with you is detaching from outcomes. The thing is that it's impossible to date successfully if you don't learn the law of detachment. So you really need to put some effort into understanding what that means. So what happens and why we get so disappointed and so frustrated and so feeling like we're rejected by men so much is because we attach too soon. And, and so you, 
you know, you might get attached to a guy that's texting you, or maybe you get attached by just looking at a picture and you think, oh, he's, he's the one for me, or maybe it's an instant message. Maybe you've had your eye on somebody at work and you've been longing to go out with him, but he's never asked you out. And so you've, atta- you've made some kind of attachment. And when you do that, and that's not reciprocated, there's a lot of disappointment for you. And when you experience, it, experience that energy of disappointment, it really, it, you take a dip. And when you take that dip, you kind of dip down into fear and it triggers all of this um, unconscious fears that you have, beliefs that are running. And so if you stay detached though, and you stay in the observer mode, observer mode, where you're just watching everything as a witness of it, but not going into it, you're going to, first of all, have more fun and you're going to be able to see who these men are that are showing up and be more objective. So the first, um, I would recommend the first three months of dating that you go uh, start dating and you just look at it as practice. Do not plan on meeting your husband or meeting your committed partner if you haven't dated after a dry spell um, right away. You want to go into it with the mindset of, and it's a mindset, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to practice being very skilled. I'm going to practice being a good listener. I'm going to practice, I'm smiling, you know, I'm going to practice smiling while I talk. I'm going to practice sitting up with my shoulders back and just leaning back and being more relaxed. You're going to practice all these things. And every time you go out, you get to practice one thing until you get better at it. And pretty soon after three months of dating, you're going to go, okay, now I, I've got it. I've got this down. And then at that point, you're really in a position to feel much more confident about the whole process. And from that place, from that place, you're, you're going to be much more likely to meet the one. Now, it doesn't mean you can't meet them on the first date. Certainly can. But if you're attaching and it doesn't work out, then you're going to become hurt and you're going to fall down that rabbit hole of disappointment and you're going to go through this um, roller coaster of dating. You've heard that the uh, getting off the, the roller coaster. So don't get on the roller coaster to begin with. That's what I recommend. Do not get on the roller coaster. Stay, stay detached. Um, be the observer. And practice your communication skills. So these are all the things that you need to be working on in these first three months of practice dating. So you're going out. You're getting more involved in your community. If you don't want to go online dating, there's plenty of men in the world. You can meet a man in real life. But you have to set up a social calendar to do that. You're not going to meet him at home. Um, what you want to do is get out the calendar for this summer. You've got June, July, and August. That's three months. Now, here's your strategy. And you're going to look at the events in your community. And you're going to become a volunteer for events that you enjoy. Film festivals, art festivals, car shows, um, the, the farmer's market. See if you, they need somebody to help set up the booths and tear them down. Um, there's a lot of interesting people at the farmer's market. So you've got to become creative and you have to get involved so that you can put yourself in a position to actually be around men so you can practice smiling, engaging, talking. And remember, it's no sweat off your back because it's just practice. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. You're just practicing. If you take this attitude, it takes all the pressure off you, right? There's no pressure on you. So you, you're free to go up and talk to the men that are around. You're like, hi, how's your day going? You know, what, what, you know, what brought you here? You know, where are you from? It's like there's no attachment because, you know, you're just practicing. And so it'll help you to become more confident. And, and so set up a social calendar, ladies, for those, those of you who don't want to um, date online and become once a week, you have to practice getting out there, even if it means going to Starbucks and reading the, you know, they have a bulletin boards with all the business cards. You can sit there. You'll notice that the same men go to Starbucks at the same time every day. Start to go at a certain time of day when you're likely to see men. In the morning, men are on their way to work. So it's not necessarily a great time to catch and talk to, to catch a man and talk to him, but you can certainly practice saying hello in the line at Starbucks, right? And waiting for your coffee. I see men all the time at Starbucks in the morning on their way to work. Good looking men in their nice business suits, if that's your thing, if that's the way you roll. So go to places with people that um, do and have the things that you like to do and have. And you'll be more likely to meet that, per- that man that has similar qualities and shared interests. And that'll make it much easier for you um, to get along. And so um, communication, that's the big thing. That's the foundation of all relationships, right? That, that leads to intimacy. You have to start practicing good communication skills. 
And the biggest part of that is being a, li a good listener. It doesn't mean letting a man ramble on and on and on without you inter interjecting anything um, on your part, but it means to really listen to what another person's saying without waiting for your turn to talk. It's really just hearing them and validating that you heard them. So that's what conscious listening really is. It's validating that person that you're listening and not just waiting for your turn to talk. And men, men really like that in a woman. They, um, they want to be understood and accepted just like we do. And so, and so you've got a little bit of a strategy here for what to do if you're on a dry spell. But the biggest thing that I want you to take away is that you have to recognize and just the awareness of this alone is going to really help you is it's going to require that you have to step out of your comfort zone because your man is not in your comfort zone. He's out of your comfort zone. So right now, if you're getting ready to uh, make the commitment to become uh, more e emotionally mature and highly functional and take this deliberate step to get out, back out there, you need to um, just be very, very aware that you're going to go through a paradigm shift. So right now you're in a comfort zone, right? But what's going to happen is your zone is going to change. And when the, in the process of stretching out of your comfort zone, it's going to feel really scary. And it's going to feel very uncomfortable because you're probably not used to looking men in the eye directly and smiling because that's a very intimate thing to do. And so you are going to need to make uh, that awareness connection with you're going to be out of your comfort zone. And, and, but what happens, the beautiful thing about that is as soon as you get out of your comfort zone you'll, and you get used to that, your zone has, has grown. So you're going to go from discomfort to, um, you're going to go from comfort where you are now to discomfort back to comfort. Only your zone's going to be bigger. Isn't that cool? So you're going to go from discomfort to, uh, wait, I'm saying it backwards. So I said it right the first time. You're going to go from comfort where you are now. And then you're going to step out of that into discomfort. It's going to be very uncomfortable. And then because you're going to stay there and you're going to be acclimate to that discomfort, that awkwardness of those first steps, you're going to become more comfortable. And then your zone is going to be grown. You're going to grow your zone. And you're going to be able to hold more, your capacity to hold more. Here's the thing. You are capable of so many things. But when you're hiding and you're playing it small, you cannot you cannot hold and hold much and it's very easy to become overwhelmed and so just knowing that you're going to go through the um the discomfort comfort and back to or the, the zone change um, it's going to really help you and so give yourself permission to go through this growth process and know that you're going to come out um, you're going to pop out the other end you're going to you're going to be in a tunnel for a while but there will be a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not going to be a train it's going to be your soulmate so um, I think that was the biggest thing for me is just, I mean, there's so much fear uh, that comes up when you're going to meet a man for the first time. I mean, I remember when I was going to meet Michael, my bottom lip was quivering, really, really. And um, it, it does that when I'm really, really nervous. And I don't get really, really nervous very often, but for some reason I was so nervous. And when I was walking up to the restaurant, I could see in and I can see him sitting at a sit-up table and a, a bar stand-up table and and I saw through the the glass and I saw him sitting there and I, I really I almost turned around and ran because that was my pattern I was a runner I was very good at leaving not very good at staying and so my pattern came up this fear came up it was like I had a, that tinny flavor in my mouth I don't know if you've ever felt that I had so much fear but I took a deep breath in that moment and I just walked into that restaurant and I'm so glad I did because uh, that was the love of my life sitting there waiting for me. So just think if you don't show up, you don't know what's on the other end of that, um, that, that instant message, that text, that, that phone call, that community center, that, that event that you go to, unless you put yourself out there. And again, the number one thing that people say at the end of their life is I wish I would have taken more risks and lived a bigger life. So the fruit of life is out there on the limb. You have to be willing to crawl out there and get it. And you are just as um, entitled as anybody else is. Um, you can have exactly what you want. You just have to be willing to do what you have to do in order to have what you want. And that's the thing. A lot of people want things to change, but they don't want to change. And so you do have to be willing to, to make some shifts. 
So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you, but there's a reason why um, you're single and you need to address that. And it's certainly something that I would be so honored to, to share that journey with you in my Bridge to Love program that's starting on Tuesday, so you'll still have time to join. And what we're going to be doing is it's five weeks of accelerated learning. You're going to, it's a bridge, right? It's going to take you from where you are now over the bridge to where you want to be emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. I'm going to help you get really grounded in yourself. So it's like you're going to grow some deep roots because out in the dating world, that tree is going to get blown around and you don't want your tree to blow over. But if you don't have any deep roots, if you don't know a process, a, a safety net, See, I'm going to help you build an emotional safety net so that you have the courage to walk through getting back out there. Because the last thing I want is for you to put yourself in a position where you're not really prepared and, and it's like taking a test and you flunk it. It doesn't feel good, right? I want you to pass the test. And so there's, there's deliberate steps you can take, skill sets that I can teach you in a very short time so that you at least have the basic skills to feel more comfortable, more confident. Don't stop wasting time. That's a big one for all of us. Time is our most precious asset. It's not money, it's time. And so you need to make a commitment to yourself to first um, be deliberate in all that you do, make your list, set your intention that you're going to commit to doing what you need to do and you're never going to give up on yourself. Um, because I know down in, in your heart, in, the, in, the, in that quiet place in your heart, you really do want love. We all do. And you're never going to stop wanting that. So it may require a bigger healing process for you, but just be willing to go through that process because it will lead you to your authentic self. And that's really the key to a man's heart is your own authenticity. Because men, especially men that are getting older, they want the real deal. They don't want younger women. They want a woman who who loves herself, who appreciates herself, who's connected to herself. That's what makes a man, um, that's what enchants a man. And that's that feminine quality that I was telling you about. I mean, we've all learned how to use our masculine energy beautifully because we're all out in the world working and raising children and running businesses. And that feminine energy has kind of atrophied from lack of use. So I want to teach you how to get that muscle back. And it's uh, the law of least effort. And so check out my Bridge to Love program. I've got the, um, the link right down here beneath me on this chat. And go take a look and see what that's about. And also I've added another bonus. I've got this amazing group of love coaches that work side by side with me. And they're so amazing. And they are going to help guide you in our um, private Facebook group. Um, if you're wanting to get into the dating world and, and help you in all these areas. But that's something you could take advantage of right away. Um, so go ahead and take a look at the, um, the program and see if that's a fit for you. If you're watching this, I would say yes, it is. And now um, I'm just wondering if we have any uh, questions here. Um, just kind of reading my notes here. So uh, I'm trying to remember some of the questions that came in and I'm actually drawing a blank right now. Um, I know that the number one thing that happens is fear, right? That's the big thing for everybody. Uh, fear, I was afraid to start doing the Facebook Lives um, last week, but now, oh my God, I love it. I'm seriously, this is the perfect example. Last Saturday, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start doing Facebook Lives because I wanna start doing this um, coaching in the moment for my ladies to help support you. And because there's so many topics that I could cover. And so I just literally committed to doing it. I sat down and I figured it out. I had to go through a learning curve. I was really nervous. My mouth is super dry. And, um, but then I did it. And I stretched out of my comfort zone and now my zone's bigger. Now I can do live Facebook things before I couldn't, now I can. So what's next, Jackie, you know? It's like, keep going, keep growing. Either you're green or growing or ripe and rotting, right? So get back out there, um, follow the plan, turn your dreams into a plan. And uh, let me see if there's any, uh, um, let me see if there's any, Lots of great ideas. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Oh, thank you, Wendy. You are too. Wendy's one of our uh, love coaches. She's amazing. I love her so much. I love you, Wendy. <laughs> clarity is confidence. I like that. That's a good one. Yes, having clarity gives you confidence. I like the great comment, Cheryl. So why clarity gives you confidence? Because when you know what you want, 
You're not going to fall for everything. You need to stand for something. You're going to fall for everything. And so when you go on a date, um, it's okay to, and if you watch my um, last training I did on men like a woman with a little sass, right? So it's okay to say, I don't like, I don't like leafy greens. I mean, oh, everybody else likes it. How can you not like that? Well, I just don't. You know, I like, I like broccoli or whatever it is. I'm just, just pulling things out of the air, but um, it's okay to, to have your, your um, likes and your dislikes, and it's okay to share those with the man. It's, everything is about how you share it, right? It's how you say things. You want to use a feather with men, not a hammer. A lot of women um, are angry or bitter or I'm scared. Most everything that I see, any kind of anger or bitterness, what's right behind that is fear and pain and hurt. You've just been hurt. And that anger is, is what your mind's using to protect you so you don't get hurt anymore. But you have to dismantle um, those, those defense mechanisms because they're keeping out all the love that you want and deserve, by the way. And so um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I hope I, this was helpful. helpful. Um, I'm going to the hockey game now. Okay, go goals. I hope that they win. They're in the playoffs. And again, um, don't put on your profile things that you don't like because you got to be genuine. Put your real age too. Last thing, don't lie about your age. You kidding? Own it, sister. Own it. You know what I mean? It's like I'm 53. Just own that. It's a number. It's all a mindset. It's an attitude. Okay. It's it's that's why I love this engaged at any age. Engage in your life. Accept yourself. Be real. And if you will, then other the men will. Men will accept you if you accept yourself. Be proud of who you are and, and what you've done with your life. Show yourself more compassion and more love, and you'll get that in return. And um, don't you don't need to lie about your age. Just um, you can put in your profile that you pr you have a lot of energy and you're very passionate, and so you like to date men that are ten years younger than you. Go for it. I mean, definitely say that if that's what. You, that's what floats your boat. But um, just be real. Be yourself because all of the other roles are taken, sister. And you are fabulous just like you are. Just like you are. Go look in the mirror right now and say, you are fabulous. You're amazing. I love you so much. Put your hand over your heart and say, I love you. And give yourself the love that you need right now. Because until you do, no one else is going to. As soon as you love yourself, somebody else will. I hope you've enjoyed this. And thank you, ladies, for all of the emails you're sending me. Wow, I'm getting so many emails and such great um, suggestions for topics and content. So please keep the emails coming. Tell me, share your story with me so that I can coach you on it. And um, have a wonderful evening and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I love, love, love all of you so much more than I can even um, share with you in words. I hope you can feel that in everything that I say and do. Lots of love. Bye. Happy Mother's Day.